I'm Lisa Fletcher for Spotlight on America. There's a new layer in the fight to protect firefighters from cancer and chronic diseases. For more than a year, we've been reporting on the hidden dangers in their turnout gear that they wear to fight fires. But now there is a new danger that is lurking potentially in their station wear. Those are the uniforms they wear all day long that could make the risks even more grave. For Fire Lieutenant Brian Goodman, there was a breaking point. I mean, everybody has a point where they're just like, why are we going to so many funerals? Why are we burying so many of our brother and sisters? And why are so many young firefighters like Brian suffering from life-changing medical conditions linked to the gear they wear? For Brian and his wife, it meant losing the chance for a family they'd always dreamed of. What was that like for you wanting to be a dad and then finding out that you were irreversibly infertile? Uh, you know, it was hard. But in the back of my mind, the one thing that I wanted to do was uh, fix this the best the way I could so that nobody else would have to deal with that. Brian attributes his infertility to exposure to PFAS, toxic chemicals found to be embedded in firefighting gear, also scientifically linked to cancer and chronic disease. Brian's PFAS levels were 166 times higher than average, but he believes his exposure wasn't limited to the gear he wore to fight fires. He and fellow Virginia firefighter Charlene Beach made a chilling discovery. They tested their everyday station in uniforms for dangerous chemicals and found some of them embedded with PFAS, as well as other hazardous materials like heavy metals and brominated flame retardants. How often is a firefighter in the station uniform? Uh, 24 hours. Your body does not have a way to detox or get rid of these chemicals and things that are lingering in your body. It's just building and building and building until your body goes. I can't deal with it. But it's also sort of odd that we have to poison somebody before it gets uh, taken out of service. Dr. Graham Peasley conducted the tests on Brian and Charlene's uniforms. He was the first to discover the toxic chemicals in turnout gear in 2018. His latest research now warning firefighters of this new risk. What was the most concerning thing that you found in the station wear? We found some of the ancient flame retardants of brominated flame retardants. Some heavy metals seem to be quite prevalent in, in some of these uh, materials. And so I think the metals scare me the most. And Peasley says absorption of those chemicals increases if firefighters leave their uniform on under their firefighting gear. Everything is affected by heat. And so if that gear was worn under their gear and they perspire more and heating up, their pores may open and that may make more go through the skin. This is what we made. Back in Virginia, Brian and Charlene aren't waiting for the industry or laws to protect their brothers and sisters. We looked at other companies out there that were already in existence to see whether or not we could find PFAS-free, chemical-free station wear. The answer to that question was no. Nobody was doing it. Nobody was making it. So they did. It's better all the way around. With hopes that new awareness brings a safer future. And once it gets out there and fire departments actually start reading the research, I think it will, it'll be a yeah. game changer because once you know, you, you can't hide the fact that you know it and you have to act. For our in-depth investigations into the toxic threats to firefighters, go to spotlightinvestigates.com. For Spotlight on America, I'm Lisa Fletcher.